the Salesforce Query Component uses Salesforce API to retrieve Salesforce data and load it into a table. This action stages the data, so the table is reloaded each time. You can then use transformations to enrich and manage the data in permanent tables. The Salesforce Incremental Load Component lets users configure a pre-existing shared job that will perform an incremental load from Salesforce. The Salesforce Output Component uses the Salesforce API to write back the contents of a source table or view into a table in Salesforce. In this video, we'll use all three components to query all contacts data to load to a table held on a different database. Perform an incremental load of contacts from the Salesforce contacts object to a different database, which will only load new or modified data. We'll use the Salesforce output component to output records to Salesforce from a third party database to first insert new rows and then to perform an update to the table to update changed records. Salesforce Query. Salesforce Query is an orchestration component which is used to query data from Salesforce. In this example, Salesforce contacts data. We'll be using a Salesforce sandbox environment to keep this example separate from production data. First, drag the Salesforce query component onto the canvas. It can be found under Components, Orchestration, Load, or by typing Salesforce query in the search bar. Connect to the Start component, then navigate to the Properties tab. Under Authentication method, there are two possible authentication methods, Username Password or OAuth. In this example, we'll be using an existing Salesforce OAuth. You can set up OAuth for Salesforce by using the Manage OAuth option from the project menu. Then select your Salesforce OAuth from the authentication property. When the authentication has been successful, you will have access to the Salesforce data sources. These are your objects available in Salesforce. To select this, go to the data source property. For this example, we'll select the contact data source. After the data source has been selected, the data selection property allows you to select specific columns from the data source. For this example, we'll be querying all columns. You can use the data source filter property to filter the data from your data source. You can limit the amount of rows returned from your data source by using the limit property. If you have a large data set, you might want to increase this limit. For this example, we'll leave it as 100. Then, under the target table property, choose the table name you want to load your Salesforce data to. Warning, this table will be recreated and will drop any existing table of the same name. For this example, we'll call the table Salesforce Contacts. Check that the orchestration job has validated, then you can run your job. Right-click on the canvas and select Run Job. The Salesforce Contacts data will now be available in the target table defined earlier. and will mirror the data in Salesforce from the time that the job was run. Salesforce Incremental Load. When the Salesforce Incremental Load component is added to the Matillion ETL canvas, the component wizard is activated. Once the wizard is finalized, a unique component is added to the canvas with custom configuration provided by the user's setup choices. In this example, we'll use the Salesforce incremental load component to load a table of contacts data from Salesforce. Then run the job again to incrementally load changed or updated records. We'll be using a Salesforce sandbox environment to keep this example separate from production data. The Salesforce incremental load component can be found under components, orchestration, load, or by typing in the search bar. Drag the component onto the canvas and the wizard will automatically begin. To use the incremental load wizard, you must have OAuth set up for Salesforce. Select this from the dropdown. Other options here are parameter value, 
where you can specify any connection options. These exist as parameter value pairs. Users can consult the Salesforce data model for more information about these connection options. And sync deleted records. Check this box if you wish to synchronize record deletions from the source data to the target table. By default, this box is not checked. Then click Next. On the next screen, a successful OAuth connection will display a success message here and display the list of available data sources. For this example, we'll select Contact. Click Next. Then on page three of the wizard, you can select the required columns for the incremental load. In this example, we'll be loading all columns, which is selected by default. Press the settings wheel to edit these if required. Click next, and on this screen, we need to specify the data warehouse details. We're using Amazon Redshift in this example, and your available options will vary depending on your connection details. Choose a bucket for the staging data to be temporarily stored. We'll also need to select the stage and target schemas. Available selections will appear in the dropdown, as well as specifying prefixes for both the staging and target tables. For example, we'll call these stage SF and target SF. Once the configuration is complete, press the create and run button to finish the Salesforce incremental load wizard and run the incremental load. When the incremental load has successfully run, you can check the data by dragging a table input component onto the canvas of a transformation job, selecting the target table, for this example, target SF underscore contact, and sampling the data. This initial run has performed a full load of the table, as no data had been previously loaded to this table. Now we'll run the job again, with changes made to the source data in Salesforce. With the data modified within Salesforce, the incremental load will now only load new or updated records. We'll run the job again. And here we can see an updated name and a new record. Scroll to the end to see when the records were loaded. You can see the difference in time between the original records and the incrementally loaded records. Salesforce Output Component. With the Salesforce Output Component, a user can use the Salesforce API to write the contents of a source table or view back into Salesforce objects. The user can employ operations such as insert, update, delete, and upsert against enriched, cleansed data from their data warehouse to create a single source of the truth. In this example, we'll demonstrate how to use the Salesforce Output Component with a Matillion ETL job that will pull contacts data from a non-Salesforce table and output it using an insert operation into the Salesforce contacts table to keep our data aligned across different locations. Then using the update operation to output modified records. We'll be using a Salesforce sandbox environment to keep this example separate from production data. Warning, this component is potentially destructive. The output operations performed by this connector can delete, overwrite, and truncate target objects within Salesforce. And these operations may be irreversible. The Salesforce output component can be found under Components, Orchestration, Connectors, Unload, or by typing Salesforce output in the search bar. Drag the component onto the canvas, then navigate to the Properties tab. Here we'll define the authentication, source table, and target object within Salesforce. For the authentication method, similar to the Salesforce query component, there are options of OAuth and user password. For this example, an OAuth will be used, which has previously been configured in the Manage OAuth option from the project menu. Then we'll define the source schema and table. For this example, a table of contacts data. This will need to be in the same format as the target Salesforce object. The data being loaded has an extra row of data, which we can output to Salesforce. 
Under Target Object, select the Salesforce object that we're loading to. In this example, Contact. For the output operation, we'll select Insert, as for now, we're only inserting new rows. And under Column Mappings, map the source column names to the equivalent target columns. When the job has validated successfully, right click on the canvas and run. Once the job has completed, the changes will be present in Salesforce. Now we'll run the Salesforce output component again with the output operator changed to update. This will now update existing data on Salesforce. For this example, a contact surname has been modified. Change the output operation to update. This will reveal a new property called Salesforce ID, which acts as the primary key for the update. For our example, we'll select ID. Then remove the column selected as the Salesforce ID from the column mapping. In this example, ID. When the job validates successfully, you can now run the job again to perform the update. Once the job has completed successfully, the updated records will have been output and will now be available in Salesforce. For full documentation on the Salesforce query, incremental load and output components, you can go to the help tab while the component is selected or visit the Matillion documentation site.